This video is just showing more of the progress on building the hot water reservoir. I have two sheets of plastic, so one and then two, so it's double layer. And I'm starting to fill it. And the inlet outlet holes are over here. And I've started installing the Takeo 009 pump. And I've got to support it and whatnot. And then that will drive the water into the boiler, taking the water out from a little under a foot from the base, which is about three feet under the water. Two feet. One foot is plenty, but two feet's better. And one key note on construction so you can see what I've done here on the kickers. I just framed a normal 2x4 wall all the way around the outside and then I laid 2x6s in and I used studs because they're all cut to length, 92 and a quarter inches. But as you can see I, I shiplapped them or lapped them uh, to where every other um, run is the opposite way so that the screws strength overall as a, an assembly is strong, strong in both directions. But the important thing I wanted to show is um, I didn't put a bottom plate on the studs, you could, but what I did instead is put a kicker plate and the reason is because the kicker plate ties directly into all of the tension members that run all the way across from one side to the other so that you've got equal and opposite forces. But there's a big difference in a very simple thing that you can do, which is how you put the screws in. And so if you angle the screws like this, then as the force pushes on the board this way, it, if you imagine that this is a slippery rod, this 2x4 is going to want to slide down the rod, but it can't because then it pushes against the plates underneath. So basically it tightens the connection when the force is applied. If instead you put the screws in this way, then the force would want to tear the screw out of the bottom board. So it's dramatically stronger to put your screws in at an angle like that because now you have to shear the bolts off and it takes a few thousand pounds per screw to shear them off. I just did a quick envelope calc on the cross section of the steel and 60,000 psi steel so um, you could look up what the actual shear strength of whatever fasteners you happen to choose. But the point is that you take advantage of the shear strength if you angle the screws like that. If you're vertical, it will work pretty well, um, but the, the plate could start to lift up and out. Um, but if they were vertical, it would be pretty much okay. But if you drive the screws in like this, um, that's a recipe for the screws to pull out of the wood and the whole bottom to kick out. And that's what you're trying to avoid with this design. So I just, I forgot to show that in the other video and I wanted to show the importance of the screws going in at that angle. So aside from that, what I have is I installed two feed-throughs. One is over there and not connected and this one will be connected. So for right now I'm going to use the one pump to take care of everything I need to do but down the road I'll install a second pump and when I when I buy the second pump then one pump will drive water through the, through the boiler and back into the reservoir and just heat the water in the reservoir with 
low resistance and high circulation gallons per minute flow rate. The other pump will flow the water through the house hydronic heating lines with higher resistance and lower flow GPM. And, um, and so the house pump will just be on a thermostat so that when the house wants heat, it'll turn that pump on and off. And then that way the floor will just sit all the time at a comfortable 80 degrees or 85 degrees or whatever temperature we want. Basically with this heating system it's not a you don't have to worry about turning the heat off and you know using as little heat as possible because it's so expensive because the wood chips are practically free so in fact you can pick them up off from wood chipper and tree service people for free so you can get your fuel for free if you're a little resourceful um, and so what that means is that basically we just decide how warm we want the house if we wanted it to be a sauna we you know say it's extra cold outside and we want to be toasty and walk around on socks on warm floor all night long then I just run the boiler for an extra half an hour and heat the house up more and that's been working great for the last few weeks and as soon as this reservoir is filled up high enough it's just now getting above the um, water level water levels above my pipe feed throughs and so um, tonight well probably take a day to warm this up so tomorrow I'll be able to have the house warm 24-7 um, or maybe Monday or so when I can hook things up a little differently in the pumping so that's progress of late and everything's working great so far